Hey guys, it's Brett. Thanks for stopping by my channel or if this is your first time, welcome. So today I want to talk about uh, possibilities for March, but I narrowed it down to eight because I didn't want to um, bore you incessantly with just a long laundry list of, of new books. So eight it is. Let's talk about it. All right, so um, one of the first things I was um, I was thinking about is, you know, people ask and always want to know, like, where do you find books or where you, where do you look for books? And clearly, I get a lot of inspiration, not just for this from this platform, but um, Bookstagram as well, and that's where I find a lot of this stuff. But the other thing that I have been now reading, and it's become such a uh, great resource, and I'm so excited. Uh, to get it every month is uh, Kirkus Reviews. And Kirkus Reviews is fantastic. This is not an ad, by the way. Um, I just have found it to be an amazing resource for so many books that are coming out. I go through and dog ear it. Uh, and it has great articles as well. But so just FYI, that's what I happen to use. Eight books. The first one, I want to talk about is Ours by Philip B. Williams. Uh, this is a monster, monster, monster book, almost 600 pages. Let me put on the old eyes so I can uh, read you a little bit about what it's about. From a writer of singular voice and vision, a mesmerizing epic that reimagines the past to explore the true nature of freedom. This ingenious sweeping novel introduces us to an enigmatic woman named Saint, a fearsome conjurer who in the 1830s annihilates plantations all over Arkansas to rescue the people enslaved there. She brings those she is freed to a haven of her own creation, a town just north of St. Louis, magically concealed from outsiders named Ours. It is in this miraculous place that Saint's grand experiment, a truly secluded community where her people may flourish, takes root. But although Saint does her best to protect the inhabitants of ours, over time, her conjuring and memories begin to betray her, leaving the town vulnerable to intrusions by newcomers with powers of their own. As the cracks in Saint's creation are exposed, some begin to wonder whether the community's safety might be yet another form of bondage. Set over the course of of four decades and steeped in a rich tradition of American literature informed by black surrealism, mythology, and spirituality, ours is a stunning exploration of the possibilities and limitations of love and freedom by a writer of capacious vision and talent. So um, I think this sounds really interesting. Now you may be wondering, why is your book marked up like that, Brett? I'll tell you why, because I am going to do a read along with this book starting this weekend. Um, and if this is something that's interesting to you and you haven't read this and want it in, and this does interest you, pop over and find me on Instagram and uh, send me a DM and I will add you to the list. I, I can try to do it here too because what I've done is I have made a 20, uh, roughly a 22 day schedule that will take us through the end of the month. Uh, it's a, roughly around 25 pages a day, so it's not completely overwhelming. Um, and I just, this is something I want to do more of is break into some of these big books this year that might otherwise seem intimidating and that you don't want to spend your entire month reading alone. And I mean that in the sense of by yourself, but also the only thing you get to because it's so big. But I think 25 pages a day can be manageable. And if people want to read more, they can read more. So again, if that's interesting to you, find me over on Brett's Bookstack over on Instagram um, and DM me and say you want to be in for the hours read along. Um, or you can also message me below and I can kind of figure it out and probably can give you the schedule, but most of it will be over there. Okay, moving on from this uh public service announcement. Um, next up, I just started this this morning, Wandering Stars by Tommy Orange. This is uh, kind of a prequel and a sequel to There There, which I liked a lot. Uh, there There I thought was a beautiful debut novel. I didn't go as crazy for it as some people did, but I so appreciated it. But certainly I'm, I'm really excited to dive back in with him again. This has got some just terrific reviews and Tommy Orange seems completely of the moment right now. So excited about that one. Okay. Next up is Reboot by Justin Taylor. And thank you to Pantheon for this. Um, 
Again, going back to Kirkus Reviews, this got a great review in Kirkus Reviews. Um, a raucous and wickedly smart satire of Hollywood, toxic fandom, and our chronically online culture, following a washed-up actor on his quest to revive the cult TV drama that catapulted him to teenage fame. Reboot is a madcap, an eerily prescient speculative comedy for our era of glass-eyed doom-scrolling and millennial nostalgia, a tale of former teen heartthrobs, online edgelords, and fish-faced cryptids, perfect for anyone who still agonizes over Angel vs. Spike, how many of you know what that is? <laughs> I absolutely do, lives in fear of the QAnon mom next door, or has run afoul of a rabid stan and lived to tell. Uh, so I have no idea. It sounds really fun. This will be coming out April 23rd. All right. Uh, next up is Oye. I think. I hope. I hope. I hope. Uh, by Melissa McGolan. A young woman reckons with her unpredictable family and the revelation of their long buried history in this wildly inventive debut which reads like a comic coming-of-age story, a telenovela, and a moving intergenerational saga all rolled into one. Uh, so this looks really fun. Stunning cover. And uh, again, thank you to Hogarth for this. Um, this comes out May 14th. Uh, next up is a list, which I love this cover, Henry Henry uh, by Alan Bratton. And um, thank you so much, to Unnamed Press for a copy of this. This comes out April 2nd. Uh, it's London in 2014, and Hal Lancaster's son and heir of Henry, Duke of Lancaster, is in a holding pattern. His mother is dead, his father is dying or remarrying, or, or both. His siblings are fighting, his internship is pointless, and, and nobody will leave him alone. Everything is as it should be, and yet nothing is right. Over the course of a year of partying, drinking, and flirting to dubious consequence, Hal is tested by brutal family legacies, Catholic guilt, and the terrifying possibility of being loved. The House of Lancaster will never be the same. Crackling with intelligence and wit, Henry Henry is a brilliant recasting of the Henry ad in which Hal Lancaster has a queer protagonist for a new era. Alan Bratton arrives as a successor to Waugh and St. Aubin with this lush, stylish novel of family, legacy, and what it means to be alive. So I think it looks great. Again, love the cover. This looks so interesting to me, a little non-fiction for you. And again, going back to my mantra, truth is, truth is stranger than fiction. Sociopath, a memoir by Patrice Gagné, comes out uh, April 2nd. And thank you to Simon & Schuster for this. A fascinating, revelatory memoir recounting the author's struggle to come to terms with her own sociopathy and to shed new light on the often maligned and misunderstood disorder. Patrice Gagné, Gagné realized well before she started kindergarten that she made others uncomfortable. She suspected it was because she didn't feel things the way other kids did. Emotions like fear, guilt, and empathy eluded her. Mostly, she felt nothing, and she didn't like the way that nothing felt. She tried to pretend she was like everyone else, but the constant pressure to conform to a society that spurned anyone like her was unbearable. So. Patrice stole, she lied, she was occasionally violent. She became an expert lock picker and home invader, all with the goal of replacing the nothingness with something. But when Patrice reconnects with an old flame, uh, she gets, okay. In a college psychology course, Patrice finally realized what set her apart. She was a sociopath. But even though it was the very first personality disorder identified, well over 200 years ago. Sociopathy had been neglected by mental health professionals for decades. She was told there was no hope, no treatment for a normal life. She found herself haunted by sociopaths in pop culture, madmen, villains, and monsters. Her future looked grim. But when Patrice connects with an old flame, she gets a glimpse of a future beyond her diagnosis. If she's capable of love, it must mean she isn't a monster. With the help of her sweetheart and some curious characters she meets along the way. She sets out to become a psychologist herself and prove that the millions of Americans who share her diagnosis aren't all monsters either. I'm really excited about this. I'm also planning to go to her event here in Los Angeles when she's here. So, um, excited about that. The Other Valley by Scott Alexander, Tom um, Scott Alexander Howard. I don't know why I was going to call you Thomas. 
It says, uh, to the east is the future, to the west is the past. If you were permitted to cross the valley's borders, which direction would you go? 16-year-old Odile vies for a coveted seat on the council. If she earns the position, she'll decide who may cross her town's heavily guarded borders. To the east, the same town is 20 years ahead in time. To the west, it's 20 years behind. The town repeat the towns repeat in an endless sequence across the wilderness. When Odile recognizes two visitors she wasn't supposed to see, she realizes that the parents of her friend Edmi have been escorted across the border from their future on a morning tour to view their son while he's still alive in Odile's present. Edmi, who is brilliant, funny, and the only person to truly know Odile, is about to die. Sworn to secrecy in order to preserve the timeline, Odile now becomes the Council's top candidate, yet she finds herself drawing closer to the, to the doomed boy, imperiling her entire future. Okay, this sounds trippy and crazy. This was just options to be done um, in a, like a bidding war, I think as a feature. I, I think it sounds so good and um, really cool cover. I love the concept. I don't even know if I understand the concept, but I'm curious. Okay. All right, and my final book is Housemates by Emma Copley Eisenberg, uh, which comes out May 28th, and thank you to Hogarth Books for this. Um, let me, I had to look this up on, um, on, <laughs> I almost said, on the app, itch. <laughs> I'm looking it up on the apps. <laughs> I'm very, I'm very advanced. Um, okay. <laughs> Uh, this is about two young housemates who embark on a road trip to discover themselves in the sparkling novel of love, friendship, and chosen family in a fractured America by the award-winning author of The Third Rainbow Girl. Uh, so it's the most anticipated book of 2024 by Lit Hub, De Beautiful, LGBTQ Reads, The Rumpus, Lilith, Hey Alma, and Them. So um, I've seen some of my friends over on Instagram who've already been chatting about this, and it sounds really, really good. So I'm I'm uh, excited to break into this. Okay, I think that is, yes, that is eight quick books um, to kind of wet your whistle for March. I don't know if there's anything on there that looks interesting to you, or maybe some of the stuff that you've already read. I uh, and then I've left, I've left myself open to to sub in some other stuff. I'm starting to fall into this rhythm of using aud some audiobooks to uh, cover some backlist titles um, while I'm doing frontlist or even stuff that's coming out. Um, reading that stuff, so I I'm liking the way that's working. And I just finished Tanya James' Loot, which I listened to and I really, really loved it. Um, that came out last year. For all of those of you who uh, might have read it, I, I thought it was just terrific. And I'll talk more about that um, at the end of the month when I do a wrap up. So anyway, I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you for dropping in and uh, I'll see you all soon.